Let's keep that. Okay. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm uh, David, and what I'm going to talk about is uh, the data in motion that we heard about it. Probably yesterday, if you've been listening to uh, John Chambers' keynote, he mentioned about data in motion as what we do at Cisco. I'll be talking today is the data in motion from a product perspective. It's something very cool in an IoT space. So uh, actually specifically what I'm gonna try to, to talk to you, to you about today is the more on the API, how simple it is. So uh, who of you have seen the train outside running? Like really touch the train, get to touch, play with it in motion? Okay, so, and so this part of this interface, this API, we'll talk about some of those APIs being used outside there. And also if you see this big screen, where you have this big kind of where your hands move, you move things. Also, you guys, uh, you've seen this one? Okay, good. So those two demos there actually run and use Data in Motion API as I'm gonna talk about it today. And it actually, it's very simple. And on top of that, uh, the last weekend, on Saturday and Sunday, there was a hackathon. And uh, Data in Motion was part of that hackathon where it's so simple and so useful and how you can plug your sensors. And if you've been in that part, probably you've seen it, how uh, probably you have done a done application on that weekend. All right. Um, so I'm gonna talk about a few things, very simple, and I'll be doing a use case for you to just imagine. Uh, there'll be no uh, much language here, be totally graphics and API, very simple. And I will not ask you to program, so it's okay if you don't wanna program, it'll be another time. Uh, so just one thing I'm gonna talk about is um, that data in motion is something key for us. Uh, it's the whole principle is we want to harness the data at the edge. It's technically, it's a paradigm shift. Complementary is not replacing, is that where sometimes we want to deal with the data as it comes from the source and analyze it as fast as we can. This is a paradigm shift for us. This is the edge analytics. This is the first entry for us in the IoT space, how we can deal with that data early on for decision making. Now, uh, specifically, what it is literally is a software that we enable our edge devices and gateways so that, and, and switches so you can make that decision as early, as young, and as recent, and as embedded we can get. So that packet, we understand it. We understand everything in it, whether it's from uh, protocols down to what it contains. This is very key. It's all about software. And this guy there need to sit down. <laughs> All right. All right, so literally, what have we done different than anything else you probably imagined? So data in motion is if you put all the stacks from the byte up to the top, is literally what we've done is we inserted a layer of software very thin to manage your uh, information. We want to do one little function is convert your data to information. We want to make decision on the information, and that is key, and as early as we get. Now, specifically, is uh, the rest could be done later on, but that major reduction, that summarization we can do as early will solve a lot of problems. If IoT need to scale up to those kind of thousands, millions, and billions of sensors, we got to deal with it early. You collect this, it's not going to happen. We have to be simple, functional, effective, and fast. This is how we do it. This is the plan. <clears throat> so uh, just a way to think of it, this is just to do some comparison, how we evolving from one to another. This is how it used to be in the cloud. This is how we will still be in the cloud. But what we're going to do is actually do one thing, just split the order, analyze first. We want to analyze maybe the information we can be dealt with early. Then if the information can be processed, I can summarize it. Maybe the information, I don't need it. It could be just noise. You know, guess what? When you go buy a sensor, and that sensor, you know you bought it in good quality, it's gonna work for you for years. It's gonna be running perfectly for a while. So we wanna capture the exception, not when it's working well, because we know it's working well. You paid the good money for it. So after the analysis, we notify. Notify, we have actions. This is the things, the key we wanna do and this is the API, we'll talk about those, those three simple things, the analysis, the filter, the notification, and the action. This is a very simple function. If we know how to program that in policy, we'll push it down. Yes? Before, everything was in 
look at the previous well, current previous paradigm, right? The before everything was stored in the cloud, and then they be analyzed, notify, act whichever, right? It's because of the computing power. Yeah. Right. And um, now you mentioned that the analyze and notify act on the edge. Yes. That means that you either so your software API is more more efficient or have a lot of horsepower on the edge. Is that correct? That's right. So this is a very good question. And so the question is now uh, as we deploy this intelligence at the edge, how much power do we have? Right. This is perfectly uh, uh, right. So uh, in some gateways, we'll, of course, we'll have power. And sometimes, you know what, we don't want to solve all the problem. We do some at the edge and some at the cloud. The cloud is going to stay for us. Actually, we're going to empower the cloud with better information, not a data collection. We want to send only the information. It's not about how much terabytes or petabytes. We know, can you make that information just sufficient, just the right information to be, to be there to do the best decision making? Yes, there'll be power at the edge, and there'll be power at the cloud. Just the balance. It's about the balance and the right transformation we want to make it. Okay, good. All right, so uh, let's talk about example and use cases. All right. So uh, in, in, this, in this scenario, and uh, it's very simple, literally, and it's very, if I have a truck, the truck goes into places, and it's a very challenging is that in this mobility of things, and this is, I'm showing one of our uh, gateways, the, uh, it's Harden Gateway, the 819. And this is have uh, in it an LTE, right? So, and if I equip that device on those kind of uh, transportations, and I can measure, in this case, I can measure the pressure of the tire, right? So if the truck is not running, should the router keep sending information or not? Should we send information about the pressure or not? So, so why we want to do that? We want to send the pressure of the tire because sometimes we want to measure how much the truck is loading. From that we can make a decision, is, are we performing on the right amount, uh, how much miles we've done. So this is kind of key. Now what's, what, would, what would happen if that truck go to places where you don't have connectivity? You want to lose the data? No. So if you think of the options we're offering here, right, so we start doing analysis. I can store the data I want at the gateway until I get the connectivity back. I can do uh, some little decisions. I can summarize my data before I send it. Sometimes data will be useless, maybe noisy. Maybe the engine is off. I don't need to send the data. The engine is off one time. The engine is on one time. You have to keep sending on, 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 on. That's wasted bandwidth. It costs you money. It costs the customers money. This is kind of a big deal. If we know how to summarize the data, abstract it properly, just send the information, what you exactly need at the right time, when and where. Very specific. At the cloud, you can analyze it, you can make the reports you need and later on. It becomes integrated. This is a, an amazing use case that you see everywhere. Trucks, buses, transportations. And so the second use case, I'm gonna ask you questions. All right. <clears throat> Now, this is a use case. I know it's a, in a, it's a rail, but probably you've seen containers everywhere. You have trucks, you know, food. Uh, you ship medical equipment from point A to point B. Now, what would happen if your containment or the truck or the doors flaps open? Something happens to it. How are we going to know that your product is uh, damaged? Who can answer that question? How are we going to solve it with a dead in motion idea? Who are going to go first? You're gonna solve the problem with me. Look at me, don't look down. <laughs> so I, I think the first thing is you wanna monitor if the doors set if the doors come open, right? So if you closer, yeah. Yeah, so you wanna monitor if the doors come open on one of the containers, right? So so you can measure that simply by a contact center or some other thing. And if the doors constantly close, you don't need to resend that data all the time, right? Like like you said, engine on, engine off, same thing, door open, door close. Then you can also measure weight, hopefully, inside of the container, so you know whether there's a displacement of the, the contents after that door is open in that, and that would typically indicate that there's been yeah. some sort of uh, shift in the stability of the transport or something else of that nature. Right? Okay, awesome. So, uh, so uh, putting sensors, monitoring the container is uh, it's a very good way to start understanding that I'm monitoring things. Now, what we want to do is in in the, in in the specific of the failure mode, uh, how we want to know that. So the sensors will tell us all the time data. But I'm going to program data in motion here is that 
to pick up the failure mode and send only the exception that it failed. And this is the kind of key that if we have hundreds of containers, if you have you guys seen a ship, uh, shipping containers? There's thousands, right? So each of these needs to send data to you. You know, I don't think you can find a single cloud that can take it on. We want to send only the exception when that sensor, the one he mentioned, fails. And that exception that we want to collect is that container, the red one, that actually the door has opened and it leaked air and it's humid and whatever temperature has dropped. When the temperature drops, or in that case, it's, uh, the varying uh, breaks, we need to pay attention to the event. So this is the use case. As we start building them one by one, we are building a, an amazing way of how we do the edge analytics. This is the data in motion principle, is that the analysis at the edge begins as early at the edge you can, at the minute that data is available to you. So uh, this is uh, another uh, use case. And uh, it's much simpler here. It's, uh, you can go very fancy. So as you notice, is that some of those gateways we have is our, our hardened gateways, and we can push out uh, in the field. This is smart agriculture. This is a way where we really want to make sure that uh, the field is well, proper, uh, managed uh, with temperature. Is in, for example, in California, it can become more effective for us here is that you don't keep watering. You just have to measure the right time when to water. In this case, it's actually it's used in Africa uh, for, uh, for crop management. So this is another router that fits in the box and it's meant to measure the dryness and run the sprinkler. Very simple, the actuation here is sprinkler. So in some case, we talked about the event for the container, it fails, tells you, tells the cloud. Sometimes, you know, can it run by itself? It's easier too. So this is something very effective. <clears throat> okay. So I did not make that slide yesterday or after what happened a few miles up north. I had the slide done about a year or so ago. All right. So what happened here in Santa Barbara? Who, we're going to answer that question. What happened in Santa Barbara? Yeah, so oil pipeline broke and uh, the <laughs> better? Yeah, so the oil, oil pipeline broke and uh, spilled a whole bunch of crude oil into a storm drain, which ultimately put it out into Santa Barbara Bay and uh, contaminated, obviously, yep. a ton of stuff. Absolutely. So, guys, this is the Pacific California beaches. It's one of the amazing beaches. I'm a surfer, by the way. So, you know, it's, it's such a pain to go to the beach and just get yourself greasy with the oil. Uh, this is big, big issue in, in, in uh, the spill we had a few weeks ago. It's a, it's a big deal. If we solve those problems, if we can monitor uh, our pipes, and that is doable. So the way it works here, I know just for illustration purposes, uh, we can monitor at every uh, point in, in, in the pipeline, so not gonna put it on the pipe in the middle, whenever the switch is just by changing the pressure change, the pressure on the valves, we can pick it up. And once it would tell you we get a drop, you don't have to see the damage until you realize there's a damage, right? You can pick up a change. This is leaking. Something's happening. And then you can react on that very immediate. This is very simple logic, and that's doable today, right? <clears throat> All right. So uh, what I'm going to do here now is just really talk about uh, the, prog I mean, the, the programmability of data in motion. And again, if you have a chance to play uh, with a train set, in the front, or I looked at the uh, the Dev IoT in the front. All of these have used this API uh, to program uh, the containment. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is uh, in Data in Motion. It is a multi-tenant. That's not for me. Uh, so uh, you can do a multi-tenant. So if even this little router you've seen in the use cases, you can have multi-user. Uh, multi contacts in it. For example, if that router is in a car, uh, the BMW engine can get their own data independently from the good year of them watching for the tire pressure. So they can separate the use cases from the sensors for different. This is a very good, amazing way to really recontextualize the delivery. So in, in, a, in, a, in a data in motion uh, engine, you can program that with policies. And in each policy, you can define three things, a pattern, a condition, and an action. 
So guess what? This is, this is the basic principle of intelligence. If condition or pattern, then you can have an action. And imagine we can do that at the router. And you can, that if pattern can pick up so many things you want from the pattern, uh, from, from, from the traffic at the packet level, even as the layer three protocol, layer two protocol. Even the payload, if this, the payload contains some temperature values, we can read that. So you can read a very rich way of understanding the data. So let's dive into that API a bit and see how easy it is, right? So again, pattern, condition, and action. And action is now do something out. And we uh, really want to define that as in the pattern uh, so we can define the protocol patterns. Like for example, you know, I want this to come from this IP and this port uh, and do the basic uh, topology of the network as your, as your pattern to look at from. Uh, the condition also uh, is very important is actually that content coming from that source that you just condition on on the pattern must contain certain things you're looking for. Uh, and that could be, for example, as very simple as temperature is above 50 degrees or the pressure is in range uh, or above that range, like in the, in the, in the oil, uh, uh, in the pipeline thing, if the pressure have changed, if there's a drop in it, you can pick it up. So this is the content, and, uh, and you have a very nice algebra in it. You can say this and this and that, but not that. You can really do quite a bit of a uh, way of looking, uh, you know, fine tuning your, your condition. On the action, and this is very important, the action is a key. There's two kind of actions. The first action is, uh, is, an, is an event. Event is where you tell the action to do something outside self. That means to notify you, to uh, repackage the data, to uh, cache the data temporarily, and to send to something, even to turn on the valve, uh, you can actuate things, you shut off an engine, it could be your fire alarm, etc. Really an amazing, as a use case before, was you don't turn on the sprinkler. And uh, the timer is another set of action. When you have that condition met, you wanna set a timer to actually, guess what, I like this data, I wanna change my speed, I want to get more data. So sometimes you wanna go actually get more data, you can set a timer. The timer would be like in your, uh, when you go do uh, in a bank transaction, you can set a timer to make a moving the money from point A to point B, and repeating every month. Here you can say a timer, go read that data from that sensor every second, every minute. You can change that time uh, anytime, uh, in real time also, it's, everything's programmable. And in such a way that timer become your data source. It's like your ping. Uh, sometimes sensors, on their own, don't know what to do. You have to go get the data. You have to go fetch it. Timer is the most effective way to read the data. So in that train set, the first thing you would do is set a timer, and the timer to read that sensor, probably every second, and for the train passes, you can pick it up. Okay, so in, in, in that level, uh, you can set uh, uh, another rule. That, so a rule can call a rule, you can nest it, or or you can just act with those actions out. So let's do an example here and play with that. Okay? So, uh, <clears throat> there's one thing I want to really express and be very precise about that. You know, uh, sometimes is, as the data comes in, it's not sufficient. Maybe you want to get more data. So there's something called the uh, window. In the window of observation, you want to connect and collects maybe in uh, every one minute a lot of data so you can make your analysis. So your metadata is that window of definition. So you can have a better understanding, better window of data collection. So in that space, uh, when you have that done, you can redefine your network, uh, your applications. You can decide, you know, I'm, I'm watching for HTTP, I'm watching for uh, something else, for uh, 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 maybe a CAN bus data coming from, maybe a mod bus. So that's if you're doing serial level uh, monitoring. On the action, uh, you can define the primitive. You can get back the actual payload draw. Uh, you want to just get the header. Uh, you want to modify that. You actually can also do uh, quite a f interesting things on the procedures type. Sometimes the gateway, our gateway, have GPS on them, like the 819. If that truck moving, when you see that event, you're going to capture the environment. Give me that GPS, where's that truck? Where's, what did it happen? When did that thing happen? So you can capture a few things as you go, and you can just do basic uh, 
notification as you, uh, uh, you go for. So this is a, a basic functionality that you could really leverage from. Just those kind of basic uh, features are efficient to get that router as simple as small it gets, very powerful. So back to your, for the power consumption, the one you addressed, this doesn't require that much power, so it adds value, yeah. Here you go. Does it working with the uh, you know GS uh, like a uh, 2900 or 3900 routers or the 40 you know what is the, like a uh, platform that required? Okay, good. Does it use TCL or use of Python? Okay, very good question. So uh, on which platform it runs for Cisco and uh, how is it done? So uh, what we'd like to offer you to uh, realize is that within Cisco's platform, as we augment. Uh, the capabilities uh, in our fog computing paradigm, uh, that in motion actually is, is a C level really embedded in the system. So in our VM space, you can add your add value software, but this is very core. Uh, it, uh, and and the, on the platform level, it supports the uh, all the ISRs, the 800 series, 819, coming up with the Balboa Gemini, CGR. You can even have it on the VM. So you can have it on the VM on every platforms in uh, like UCS E and C. So as you go on the platforms, you can scale up. As you go down to the gateway, you can really scale down to the our edge devices like the one we saw, 819 is one of the smallest, the kind of handheld. But as you mentioned, as we go up on the 2900s, you will be running in the, in the, uh, in the VM space, okay? Yes, so, no, no. So, uh, this is, uh, this is not EEM. So EEM is the, uh, where you can do uh, little programming in the iOS. So this is runs in the Linux containers outside uh, iOS. So because we want to virtualize the whole thing, we can scale. You can have about maybe 50 data in motion on one router, doesn't matter. So you can run as many VMs as you want. For example, in, on a UCS platform, the bigger one, we can scale up to 10,000 sensors because we have about 20 blades, and each blade can take about 500 sensors. For us, it's quite a bit. This is amazing. You can run a big operation like this space here. We can monitor everything, and that will probably take a UCS uh, uh, class uh, compute to solve that much complexity. So it does scale up. It does scale with the number of sensors as on your demand. For example, in hospitals, you have so many beds, so many sensors, then you can put a high-end uh, way to monitor that patient, that table, that uh, bed went up and down, uh, uh, the guy pushed the button, the guy shut off the lights, uh, the, this light bulb was off, whatever. So all these become monitorable, and you have about 10,000 sensors in the hospital, very easy. And this is where you scale up. On a traffic, like on a truck, you go probably for a lower end with a five, 10 sensors, 20 sensors that can connect directly with the CAN bus or mod bus of the, of the truck. That is we can bus, okay? All right, so I uh, want to kind of repeat that model here. So this is what you actually see is when you take that logic on the right side, those rules, if, then, condition from an uh, wishes you program, and you put these. So the actual, the fun part, the API, this is the first time getting exposure to API. API is so simple. It's, it's JSON. JSON goes into the, uh, the router, in the data in motion that sits in the router, and it does the basic stuff here. It takes a lot of data from the sensors. This, this graphics illustrates, it, it compresses it, it abstracts that, it summarizes that, and send it northbound to uh, higher end services, to the cloud. So that is the process of logic where you have those policy to uh, do that uh, job for you. So here's the good news. All right. Um, we decided about actually two years ago, we push all the API up in the Eclipse as uh, in the Eclipse Foundation. Everything's out there. And, uh, and the good news is that we've tested that in so many places as early as young as 16 years old programmers can hack and write codes on this. Uh, so this comes in uh, Java, C, uh, and uh, uh, JavaScript, Node.js. And all those UIs are available to you. There's a lot of code there. Please just anytime download those stuff and have fun with that, okay? And then that's kind of key. And if you want to contribute, just please contribute. It's very becoming very popular to the extent uh, from programming it. So the only thing is that it's, it's a past the proposal stage. It's been uh, now it's, it's been a, a project that you could uh, work with, and you could uh, augment to that. So 
Uh, what are you going to see now? Those APIs actually are outside as part of that Eclipse uh, release, and all this UI stuff you can uh, grab anytime. All right, so uh, one of the UI here, and this is how you look at it from programmability, is what is on your left side is our policies we created. And just for illustration purposes, these are similar policies we have for the train. And as you write a policy, you know, feel like, you know what, I'm getting that data from that sensor. I'd like to see the telemetry. So you create a widget here. You can bring down the telemetry window out. And you probably have seen the big screen where with the dev IoT is very similar in principle. You get a widget out. So this is the public release, uh, the open source release. You get a widget out. You can see the data coming out. Then you start changing your policy. You modulate the policy, and you get a different telemetry. And you can do as much as you want. So you can have one widget for policy, off you go. So this is for the events. Uh, you can do the timers, you can go get data for you, and the events to actually get the data and be able to display that for you in this fashion. So this is something we push out to give an idea and how you could uh, bootstrap uh, partners and, and you guys to really start to see how to really push the policy down, how you can get the data out. and. So we got to be careful is we don't want to keep reading the, the data from the sensors. That's kind of silly because, you know what, the sensor, term, let's say it's, a, it's, a, it's an Arduino. You know, how are you going to protect your data from being hacked, especially on the network, right? It's kind of key. As you go into products or something serious, our routers will give you that kind of protection, but also you can isolate your sensors from the real world. So become almost a LAN WAN uh, uh, mapping. So with the policy, you push the policy to manage your data, and then you could send the data up north to your cloud or to wherever application you work. This is a good example to visualize that. This is the simplest application from, you can build uh, from it uh, your application. Policies, get the data, do what you want to do with the policy, uh, and then send the data northbound. This is an example of visualizing the data being displayed on your screen. But of course, the application will be much richer and much more developed. Uh, so, uh, again, uh, we'll go through the API and how uh, we set it up, the logic as a flow. So, uh, this UI is actually is a Node.js. You can find it, you can also find it in the, in, the, uh, in the Eclipse. What you need to do here is that as you bring up your browser, you need to tell the uh, UI, you know what? Uh, where is my, uh, where is data in motion? Where does it sit? So you have to give it an IP. It's which, where is the router? Where is that, or where is that VM image? So you, you actually, you define that. In that case, it's 127 local, because it's running on my local machine. Uh, and uh, of course, you have to be a user. This is a multi-tenant. You could be like, say, BMW or uh, Goodyear, if you really try to log in to data in motion in the car. So this is how you specify. And of course, you put your password to uh, get into it. Now, so in general, is, uh, since the API is RESTful, uh, the first thing you end up getting, uh, maybe you can do a prop find on your URL. You get all the policies as, as like if you did a listing. So what's the existing policy you have already loaded? You could do a delete, so technically on top. You can do a delete, or uh, uh, which is uh, also a RESTful API, as in delete. And then you can delete uh, API at a time. I mean, a rule at a time, in that case, uh, this is what you get. <clears throat> now, uh, the second API uh, we're going to talk about now, as we talked about it, and just imagine that is uh, some sensor there. It has a web server in it. It just really reads some sensors as in the train, like uh, some uh, um, lights or some motion sensor. And then uh, we need to put a timer to go read that sensor every second. So we're going to write a timer rule that reads that sensor every second. So what we're going to do here is uh, we, can def uh, we can give it a name. Everything has to have a name. It's kind of key to know them. Uh, and uh, we know in which context it is or which user. And uh, we can uh, define a window. Remember we talked about the window. Uh, we can say for uh, every 1,000 um, seconds or some kilobytes. Now we have to, we can define uh, some protocols if we want to filter by. We know it's an IP, uh, and then uh, on the application side we can decide it's a, well, it's a timer, it's an HTTP, and in that case uh, the period is 1,000 milliseconds, right? So every minute 1,000 milliseconds go get that data. Of course, it's become 
sensitive to one millisecond. Uh, and the end point is where that device is, right? So go there and uh, do a method resource API uh, at port 5000, in that case is defined by path, but whatever, you wanna go uh, get that data. That device will respond to you, send you back data, and then we have to do after that is uh, act, let's verify, verify the rule here. So when you write that rule, that timer rule, what it's gonna do is it's gonna create a JSON payload, and it's gonna send that payload down to the router to data in motion, and it will accept that. This is very simple. When you write the API, you know, you don't have to use those kind of uh, software or that code we push it. You can have your own. You can do it in Python, whatever. But as simple as writing um, a JSON in. And how simple it is, you can even use uh, any browser with, with this kind of postman. You can write JSON in, it's, it will work. So if you can get very fancy, very good in JSON, you can write JSON like that, and you can program data in motion as fast as you type. <coughs> Excuse me. So any questions so far? Just make sure I don't lose you on that. Okay. So the next part is, uh, <coughs> so we, we're getting the data now from uh, data in motion. And we need to capture that and verify if that value is of our, for our interest. <clears throat> and we need to do a constraint and read the value out. So in the same way, we give that a new uh, rule name. And after that, we uh, do a filter by as we've seen. And here, what we're doing is adding a, f a constraint because I'm looking for the value at that port to be less than 100. So analog.port is actually a value that comes from the sensor. We didn't make it up. So in that case, we tell data in motion, expect to do some value coming from port and do filter on that condition. It has to be uh, less than 100. So we can have another rule. And the same thing here. In this case, we switch the analog to over 100. You know, it's just for fun. And uh, so as you, as you notice here is actually the uh, end point is we're trying to turn on an LED on and off. As you're going to do there in the train model, you are turning uh, the lights red, green, and yellow. <coughs> and uh, this kind of the basic uh, logic here so you can program that with your conditions pressure threshold above 10 sensors pressure to, you know less than 10 and you can turn the led on and off this is the basic use case you can imagine that you could do uh, and play with it on the train station but in that case instead of turning the led on and off you choose the color of your stoplight green yellow or red very simple uh, simple logic okay so i'm going to take questions right now So how do you, you mentioned you were running the like VM for the data and motion APIs on your local machine. Is that something that we can download from DevNet and actually set up a, a test environment or is Sandbox <coughs> or some other hosted solution the only way to really get ac access to this right now? Good. But this is a great question. Now, how do we get uh, p people like you, where is that VM? I want to mention. On DevNet, if you go to the DevNet, uh, it's uh, developer.cisco.com. There's a lot of documentations, and also the VM will be there for you. So to download that VM, it's available. And, and also, Cisco offers, uh, actually very soon, uh, a sandbox. That means we offer you the whole system set up. So uh, with something like that, you can go program it, and we can even offer you simulated sensors data, so you can just have fun. Um, as in the outside, but if you want a VM, uh, you can run that on your uh, on your laptop. Uh, that something's available, and we'll be happy to uh, supply you with that. So you have got to be though a developer registered. You have to be on Cisco Developer uh, Network, so we can offer you that that uh, uh, software to play with. Any more questions? So uh, let me ask a question. So uh, when you guys uh, seen the train outside, have you managed to get the, the red lights on and off? Have you tried? Yeah. 
Oh, took him off? Yeah, so the train. Oh, they took the trains off? The, 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 oh, okay. Okay, all right. Okay. Okay, so, uh, <clears throat> so uh, wh what I suggest uh, we think of is if you want to play with it in motion, uh, really test it. You can get on the console, there's something called the Learning Lab. Uh, so you can go to the web page, developer.cisco.com. You can grab any of the console. I actually, I do recommend you could do that uh, so they can get a refresher, because I know I talked about it. I went very quickly about it, and I'll be hanging out there for the next half hour if you have questions. Uh, but specifically, just get on the page, mess with it. Uh, it's not going to break. Uh, if it breaks, you could, it's fine. Uh, but try to see what does it mean. Uh, read the documentations. And uh, there's on the web page, if you are, if you guys on, on, on the computer, if you go to the develop, developer.cisco.com, on the data in motion, at the bottom of that page, there's a lot of videos. You can watch them. These are practical video, videos with Arduinos. Uh, there's one video with an actual industrial box uh, with a partner we've done. And, and so it's real sensors real ones, not the little ones, the one we deploy on the field, and uh, with an actual router with the 819, and with some an app, real application was built around that. So you get to see that over there. So uh, that's very important, and I know it's, uh, in an hour we can't cover that much, but to give you an idea how far can we go and how, how much can we develop around that from, from, from applications. Now, one thing I mentioned, I did not mention to you, so uh, as we develop the data in motion uh, principle, it also can work on non-Cisco uh, products. That means this is a software, you can also have it on non-Cisco uh, products. As an example of VM um, uh, software, you can run that on your laptop, you can run that on Raspberry, you can run that whatever you want. So this is the kind of idea how far can we go. By doing so, you actually abstract the whole principle and you virtualize the sensors up below it. But it's good to have that integrated uh, within your paradigm. Data reduction, summarization is key for your sensors. And, and again, I do invite you to look at those videos uh, uh, as an extension to this, uh, to this session. Okay, so any more questions? Sure? All right. Okay, so thank you all.